Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. start this lecture um, by recalling what we had learnt in the last few lectures. I had a given an introduction to the ancient Indian and science and technology and I am trying to impress upon you people that we had a very good heritage of the ancient, uh, there is a very good heritage of the scienti scientific heritage we are having. And we should try to learn and uh, also address the problem faced by the modern science and technology due to the wrong philosophy of right, life and also the philosophy of science and technology is against the mother nature. And I had uh, given you where we can intervene, what we can learn and from the uh, earlier uh, Indian uh, science and technology so that we can uh, what you call look at it a new perspective and also adapt in the modern day. And uh, today we will be looking at agriculture, therefore uh, let us start with the thought process that is agriculture is the foundation of human civilization. If you look at like uh, that uh, we are being told that people were living in the jungles like animals, particularly the man. But later on they learned how to uh, cultivate and they settle and then civilization start that is the fulcrum or that is the starting point of human civilization. Therefore, agriculture plays an important role and uh, if you look at our scriptures that agriculture is very important because anne pratishta deva even the God has to rely on the food. So, food is very important. And uh, what we will be looking at here in this, what are the technology available in ancient India, particularly pertaining to the agriculture means farming. And we will have to see how we can adopt it is, but before that we need to ask certain question, why do we give importance for agriculture in India? Since time memorial, I mean see if you go back to the even like uh, starting of the civilization in this country which is around what we have looked at historically like 8000 uh, before the common uh, era kind of things. Uh, so, therefore, why can anybody tell me like why we need to give that much of importance to agriculture, why not we will be on service sector or some manufacturing kind of things. Because food is a basic need. Yes. So, it has we to can be. always. Uh, you know import. I mean there are several other countries who rely on import of food at this moment, why we cannot? Any idea? And we will have to see that what are the you know land, what kind of land we are having, what are the natural resources we are having and how those things are conducive for cultivation. So, that we will be looking at because I have already discussed some of the things I am repeating because you have not kept in mind that is why I was thinking that repeat again. India has 52 percentage of cultivable land as compared to the world average. You can say that it is the what you call food house of the world that way that means it is she is having or the India if I say as a mother you know like always we say mother India. So, she has the you know capability to produce the food to provide us food and food is important. Beside this for the cultivation for any plantation or trees we rely upon the sunshine because that is the energy being captured by the all fauna you know or the plants because that energy is converted into you know through photosynthesis and then we use it for our 
energy need of the body. Okay? Because if you look at whole, this thing is energy only, right? Energy and uh, what you call information, that is the main thing what uh, we do sustain the life and so also the other things. So, sunshine is very important and this we are endowed with that because being a in the semi-tropical region. And we are also climate is very important for cultivation. So, we are having something 15 major climate region, therefore, varieties of the plants we can having, the biodiversity is quite you know phenomenal in this case, 10 biodiversity regions are in this country. As I told earlier, India is not a country, it is a subcontinent, okay. it is not a mere country. Because of biodiversity, because of this various major climate regions and we are having endowed with a lot of also fauna and floras. Of course, this number I have little bit changed than the earlier one, that is over 8,71,318 species of fauna we are having. So, he is a quite a bit number. Of course, due to the human interventions and due to the uh, what you call abuse and misuse of the modern science and technology in the name of developments, adopting the unsustainable and uh, what you call anti uh, nature, mother nature, we are spoiling it and we should keep because the life all are connected that is the our scripture always talk about. And similarly, 47,000 species of flora found in India and there might be much more than that. And uh, of course, uh, I will show you that this I have taken from some uh, resources because the number I was doubting. So, and then I found a look that is taken from reference, I will show you a little bit later on. And India has the largest livestock populations, which is uh, you know uh, quite good for our uh, meat of the need of the milk and then you know other uh, kind of things like as a food also. Even uh, I will tell you why we need to rear the uh, animals is very important, right. I will be talking about later on that let me ask you a question that why we need to have livestock, why we need it for our life, why not we will use machines, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages. Please think about it. Can anybody tell me now why we need to have uh, livestock? You know? huh? But that cannot be product, then how it is related to the life and how, why not I have a machine? For example, I can have a, a tractor, I can have a trailer, I can have some other thing they will do. Why we will have a life? Because is, you know, so those questions you need to ask and I am having some logic to it and we can discuss it later on. And uh, large number of rivers and water bodies, you know, if you look at the so many rivers are there, like you start from Ganga, Brahmaputra, Kaveri, these are big rivers, Mahanadi, Tapti, Godavari, Krishna, there are several rivers, if you name, you know, it will be too many, <laughs> right. These are the big rivers I am talking about, there are several uh, small rivers are there in this country, not only that, we are having lot of water bodies, lakes are spanning over kilometers, we are having also. Uh, unfortunately, in modern time, we are encroaching into the the person and taking for our habitats and kind of which is bad because of growing populations, and also not concerned for the nature. That is the very important. So, uh, if you look at I was talking about, I have taken this data from Alfred G. Arby written by that an overview in fernal diversity in India, and uh, of course the editor, as I told. Alfred J. Arby and others also, and this is from NV Center Geological Survey in 1998. This is little old data, but however, these numbers will be correct to whatever I am quoting. So, that is the reason, you know, one of the I mean, reason why we should go for cultivation because we are having teeming population of 130 crore, I mean, you can say 125 crore by official, but actually, according to me, it will be around. 130 crore people, right? And we cannot rely on the outside country to for their food, we will be in trouble. And uh, why is the agriculture important for India? As I told, the even today, the livelihood of the people, 130 crore people, you know, 53 percent, 
something uh, being provided by the agriculture. Although, uh, and in spite of that, still we are uh, finding difficulties to having, you know, um, laborer for the agriculture. That is the problem today we are facing in the village area, rural areas or the villages. And this is accounts for 16 percent of GDP. Let me tell you it has been lowered down because of uh, fact that services are increasing. I will show you a diagram maybe, it will be uh, tell you. If you look at agriculture was the highest in the 1950, something 50 percent of GDP was from agriculture. And uh, industries uh, was something around maybe 18 percent roughly, you know, if you look at this diagram, then it goes up and then, you know, goes uh, up and then of course, now it is going up little bit, it is data is still 12, uh, 2010, you know, 16 maybe little higher because a lot of importance are given for manufacturing with the new government in the center. And uh, the, of course, the service sectors has been increasing at a rapid rate, but it can fall at any time because we are depending on the foreign countries for that, because we became a service provider for the most of the western countries in software particularly. So, if it will fall down, where will go, <laughs> right? That is the one question we need to ask and food is important. Of course, agriculture GDP is going down, but we need to take care of that our own food security. So, uh, if you look at uh, that contribution of total export, we do export a lot of food stuff to other countries around 10 percent and supplies raw material to industries for the other foreign countries. I feel that what we need to do that we need not to supply the raw material, rather process it and go so that we can have a value addition to that. And for that, we need to have our own enterprises who will do that. Okay. And in modern time particularly, lot of multinational companies are coming and then they are doing business and we became a, you know, what you call uh, um, consumers and also we are uh, going and doing a job. I would call upon of you, all of you to become entrepreneurs and generate, you know, uh, value added products and then sell like we can sell to other countries and become richer and then get gain something, you know, wealth for our own country and for our own sake. So, therefore, we need not to be a job seeker, we should be job provider, that should, you should be keep in mind and lot of things we can do that. And growth rate in agriculture production, of course, 5.7 percent, this data is from 2000, you can say 10 or 11 and 12 kind of thing and food gain production is something 252.56 million tons. It is in 2011-12. Now it might have gone up a bit. This data, you know, I'm giving to have a feel that what we are having, you know, like, and what is the potential, how we can grow, and other thing, and why you will go for agriculture. That is the thing to make a point. You need not to worry about, uh, you know, like exact data, but you can see the exact data. And if you look at total geographical area, what we are having is uh, 3 to 9 mega hectares and uh, potential for biological products 265 mega hectares, net sown area is 143 mega hectares. We can have also increase this land and net irrigated area is very small that is 56 mega hectares. Area threatened by land degradation since 50 percent of this TG, what is the area because of wrong method of cultivation and also the industrializations, you know, our soil is being getting spoiled. And of course, the drought prone area is 190 mega hectares, but uh, what I am thinking that it can be changed provided if we have a relation, develop a relationship with the mother nature. Uh, I mean, like if we make our system integrated and uh, sustainable then we will not have this problem, we can manage well. These are all according to me drought prone area is a rather man made. In other words, if you understand them nature and work with her to do that thing, then you know we will do not have that. We, as you go along we will be discussing because I will be talking about the natural farming toward the end of uh, this series of lecture on agriculture, right. So, uh, therefore, the agriculture plays a major role 
not only in economy, but also that is the foundation of national life. So, it is very important that we need to stick to our agriculture and use our technology, I mean like whichever we can have, get from the, our ancient practices or, or traditional practices and then do that. So, uh, before getting into that, let us look at what are the process involved uh, during this farming. You want to have like let us say you want to grow rice, wheat or paddy or any other things and take it as a profession or a, this thing for your own. What are the things we need to look at it? Can anybody tell me? Like? Selection of soil. Yes, selection of soil, any other thing? Uh, seed selection. Seed selection, very good. What else? Resources. Huh? What are the resources? Soil is very important, that means you need to identify the soil and what you are having, how to improve it, what else? Any other thing? Availability of water resources. Yes, water, uh, how to you will get for the irrigation or something, any other things? If you want to farmer, you will have to look at eight major steps for you know crop selection to the harvesting, because what kind of crop you will have to do? today? We are all being swayed away by the profit, rather I call profit maniac, you know, is being coming into pictures. But if you look at your uh, tradition, it is not the profit alone, you will have to have profit, it is not that you will do with the loss, okay. But it should be attached to this auspicious thing, you know, I ask you, in your all auspicious occasion, we write, you know, soup love. Why it is so? Why not only profit? Lab means profit. Why not only profit? Profit cannot stand up its own. Only for profit we should not live a life. We should not do anything. Only for profit, no. It should be always will be auspicious means will be integrated, we do good to the others, to the society, right? That is very important. That is our culture. But we have forgotten. We are just writing on maybe this marriage occasion or some other celebration, traditional celebrations, we will write down, but we do not know why we are writing. Are you getting my point? So, it is very important to look at the signatures which are there, till now we are having, but it is going, it is uh, you know being uh, driven out of our mind and then also our traditions due to this blatant adoption of the western way of life, right? And we should understand that this is the legacy what we are having. This is the heritage which we have inherited. And we, and it is very important to have profit, but it must be proper. It must be for the welfare of the society. It must be welfare of the mother nature, all integrated. Those are things. So, therefore, profit is required. So, therefore, you will have to select the crop. When you select the crop, how we will have to do that? We will have to see what are the crops can this soil we can have and what are the your need. For example, you need food, right? I should not do this what you call tobacco cultivation because I want money, fast money, right? Of course, tobacco is required for certain thing, but you should not make it like a, what you call NASA, right? Addiction and then all people will be, you are getting money, but the society is in the turmoil, are you getting? So, those things one has to look at it, but tobacco is having also effect on this some Ayurvedic medicine or some other thing, that is all right, are you getting my point? So, therefore, it is important to look at what you want, it should be ethical, it should be societal benefits and one has to do that. And uh, the land preparation, for example, you are having a land where you want to have rice, but it is not very suitable. What you will have to do? You will have to prepare and how you will prepare, what are the things and how you will do it naturally without really spoiling and seed selection. How you will select a seed is very important. Nowadays, you know the seeds are coming, that uh, companies are coming with the seed, which will not having any, you know, uh, kind of thing, they, it will not germinate. Even if you produce seed, it, sometimes seedless things are coming now, you know. So, they are controlling, we do not have the knowledge how to 
keep it, how to select it, how to you know take care of it, which seed we will have to select and how it will be integrated with the uh, local areas and seed sowing, you will have to sow it, how to sow it properly so that it won't get affected, which time we will have to do and then what is that thing you will have to look at it. And irrigation as you told, some of you told that water is very import, important because our Shastra says right, annad bhavanti bhutani prajyanath annashambhava that means from the rain water or the water you know the anna means food will come. Annad bhavanti bhutani that means from what you call food the life has come, bhutani means living beings. Okay. So, therefore, you will have to look at water, how to take care of it and what are the areas and how to protect the water so that it would not be taken away by the sun, you know it will evaporate and go and then you will have to preserve it, how you will do that, how you will integrate. Then what is the crop growth, right? the growth, how it is, how you will enhance, of course you need to have, how you will protect so that growth can be done and then fertilizing like you will have to use some fertilizer, what kind of fertilizer, whether you can do it naturally without using fertilizer, all those things you need to look at it and harvesting, how you will do that is the so uh, you know key factors. If you look at harvesting is a very, very important, uh, if you look at uh, that the plants they grow themselves, we need not to do anything, is it we will have to do except we will have to take care you know like uh, that uh, things are in proper this thing, otherwise they grow of their own provided sun sign said it is not being said, you know said is not there or the sun is there and proper you know this thing will, will be there. So, uh, and uh, the soil will be proper and is, uh, like animals and other things are prey or the other things should not spoil, so those things will have to look at that. So, these are the processes, general process I have told so that you will be you know familiar with what is the things to be done in agriculture because most of you may not have idea about the agriculture, right? am I right. So, therefore, I have given some uh, introduction. So, we will now see, uh, I mean let, let us ask a question, what do you mean by modern agriculture? Any idea? In modern time, we are adopting basically agriculture as an industry. People are trying to, as if it is an industry, it is a basically for business, you know. Earlier days people used to do for their own food productions or to food they need and then they are using it uh, in a village kind of things. But in modern time, it is an industry, right. In, right? in a western country, it is an industry almost. Very rich people will be farmer, not like in our country where poor fellow will be farmer, <laughs> right. Here poor fellow and that, that is, I am afraid that within maybe 50 or 60 years, the same thing will be there. The food will be controlled by the rich people and they will dictate what are the prices will be. And the poor fellows will be laborers, not their farmers, right. And farming is very important. You want to grow spiritually, you will have to do farming because I call Rishi Banne ke liye Krisi Karna Jaruri hai, right. So, therefore, it is important, but what are the problem with the, what is the modern agriculture? So, if you look at modern agriculture uses basically hybrid seeds of single crop varieties, right. They use a hybrid seeds or a, a technologically advanced equipment like tractors, trailers, Shredders, rice transplanter, fertilizer spreaders, you know, extra lot of things, gaskets you will have to use, and uh, fertilizer, pesticides, and water, like you know, by the modern irrigation system to produce large amount of single crop. If you look at even in India today, rice, only rice are there, you know, only wheats are there, you know. So, that is not really the right thing because if you look at nature, if you go to a jungle, what do you see? Is it that only uh, this will be there, only one crop, one plant will be there? No, all together. So, therefore, the togetherness is very important, right. So, nature works in that way. If you look at animal will be there, insects will be there and then plants will be there, together is the nature. So, similarly, plant kingdom also like that. So, but whereas the modern you know you want to have, so therefore, you this thing. Uh, so, and you use these uh, various gaskets and as a result, the energy cost, you use a lot of energy, 
energy means you know like basically fossil fuel we use for getting energy and then plowing for plowing we use will be using the tractors for you know uh, like a plowing earlier days we used to have a bullock for that and with a plower but today mechanized one you can uh, do that and then you can use them harrowing harrowing will make some kind of a uh, making this uh, soil to be uh, conditions or you can make it bre break the soils and then you know so and also make this uh, kind of um, uh, what you call so that it will be smaller one and it can air can get into all those things that is the you know if look at this is the harrowing some kind of a uh, pin will be there and then that will be and you will have to also planting so right you know you will have to plant and you need to have fence these things and weeding out suppose some other things other you know uh, plants will be growing because of some un uh, unnecessary this thing that will take away the your uh, what you call fertilizer what you are using you know so then you will remove it but those may be beneficials you know you do not know and then pest controls and of course the how to store this food that is also another because we use air conditioner other things you know lot of energy is required so as a result the cost is very higher so what i am thinking i will give an assignment maybe to look at what are the cost involved how this cost is increasing day by day of the food price and the, uh, uh, the production like how to while cultivation you know or the farming cost are increasing right and uh, where we are the cost are so that we can minimize it and in india we don't need really very big machines because we are having a lot of people and then they can work manually or little bit small ma machine they can use which is not consuming the or guzzling the you know what you call energy or the either electricity or the diesel or the petrol kind of things or the any other uh, fuel so that uh, we can and also once they will work they will get also physically fit they need not to go for a walk or a, for a run and then do that thing for maintaining the body and these are all the wrong notion that therefore one has to use that thing and uh, if you look at characteristics of modern agriculture it has a higher level of input because you are giving a lot of energy or a lot of cost in involved because you have to buy this uh, pesticides you have to buy this fungicides you have to buy this fertilizers you have to buy the seed also right you have to use this all these gas gates from the market and output per unit agriculture they want to have higher but unfortunately it is not therefore a lot of farmers are committing suicide it has a low fallow ratio fallow means you know this thing uh, for uh, cultivating so that uh, you know like um, less number of people will be required because they are using machine and a higher use of input such as capital labor higher fertilizer i have told pesticides and plant growth regulator they want to regulate control it artificially and uh, mechanization of higher crop yields per unit land they want to have but then they will have to pay the price for it cost is increasing it demands more detailed analysis of growing condition including weather soil water weeds pest you know all this our modern technology we are using to predict it so that they will be and then as a result what is happening people don't have a feel for it that now farmers are laborers or farmer they are dumb fellows they don't have understanding what is happening and it relies on ongoing innovation in agriculture machinery farming method genetic technologies techniques for the achieving economics of scale logistics even data collections analysis technology you know lot of sophistication has come up and then that also for that you will have to pay a price okay which is natural one and we are going doing it unnaturally we are paying a lot of price for that so that is the problem with the, as a result you know it is a very costly affairs so what i will say that we will stop over here and uh, we have seen that what is the Uh, what do you mean by the agriculture and you know, what are the processes involved in agriculture and then we la we also looked at why we need to go for agriculture in our country and we have also seen what is the methodology adopted for modern agriculture and what are the fallacies right we'll stop over here thank you very much